I can remember him having the aircraft when I was uh, really young, um, you know, like 10 or 11 years old. Um, Dad had the airplane. Um, Dad kept it for a couple of years. He bought it with a group of friends and they restored it. Uh, I've got fond memories of flying with my dad to pancake breakfasts and different fly-ins and stuff in the aircraft. Well, Doug and I have been friends since we were little kids. Doug and I decided to buy the airplane from my dad when he was ready to stop flying. We wanted to keep it in the family and I needed uh, probably somebody to help me pay for some of the bills and, and Doug's uh, A&P IA, so he was perfect for, for that. Uh, I called him up one day and I said, Doug, you want to own half a champ? And he said, which one? And I said, Dad's, and he says, I'm in. We flew the airplane for several years before, uh, doing a little maintenance things, adding the shoulder harnesses and a couple other things to update it. Uh, after a while, it needed some uh, TLC and some restoration work. And so about uh, six years after buying it, then we decided to do a, uh, take it apart and do a full restoration and, and bring it back up to snuff. Uh, the guys from the, the Stoughton, Wisconsin airport uh, that we grew up around and, and taught us about the airplanes and got us into uh, maintaining and restoring airplanes and such, uh, one of them owns the old uh, Pontiac garage in downtown Stoughton. Uh, it's a, a red brick building with the uh, large picture windows in the front. We were fortunate to have that, especially in the wintertime where we could work on the airplane inside heated. Uh, but it also had the, through the windows, you could see the airplane and people would keep track of our progress as we went through uh, during the restoration. It's nice having somebody that knows the airplane that can, you know, look it over and knows the history and knows what needs to be done on it. Um, we work pretty good together. There's a lot of challenges on the plane. Uh, the, the nose bowl was a, a big challenge and the door, champ doors are notorious for not being straight so there was several weeks just you know working on the door making it so it looked straight and closed properly and the hinges all worked. If I didn't know how to do it I, I would ask one of the people that I was working with uh, you know down at the Pontiac garage one of the Bill Amundsen or somebody and and uh, or my dad or you know I'd ask my dad how he did it and, and uh, we'd go from there, or I'd get uh, YouTube, look on there, study something, grab books, uh, went to EAA's library, you know, and, and picked up stuff at Oshkosh, looked at lots of other airplanes, took a lot of pictures, that helped the most. So as we were looking for the paint scheme on this airplane, how we wanted to finish it, we didn't want to go with the original Aranka paint scheme. Uh, we wanted something the same era, and we came across on the internet some pictures of a champ done by Frank Isabel, and later owned by John Baker, and with the Aranka sedan uh, scheme. We liked it, it fit the airplane well, it was the right era, and looked nice, so uh, Mr. Baker was really good about uh, helping us with some measurements and location of the lines, and it really turned out well. We were looking all over the place trying to find that particular font. Nobody could figure out what that, that font was, the Aranka or the Champ. Doug found somebody that had a, an idea what the font was and I took it to a, a local uh, uh, cutter uh, that made stencils and things like that and I showed it to him and he says, geez, I don't know what that is either. And so he made me a couple of samples and then we went from there, we modified it and stretched a few things and, and uh, finally got it to the point where we, we thought it looked like what the sedans were. And uh, then I had, um, had him make a couple of test samples. We tried them out. Gate got the approval from Doug and we put the stencils on and painted them on. The fabric work I think we did an outstanding job on. I challenge people to find a hole, you know, that a, uh, anything can get into really. I mean, it's, it's sealed up pretty well. I bet you if you put this thing in the water it'd probably float. <laughs> There's some uh, metal work that we did on it. Uh, that was kind of new to me. I've never did that much metal, sheet metal. It's all nice and neat. neat uh, installation for maintenance so everything can be taken apart and inspected quickly and, and reassembled. A lot of little details in the airplane that are you wouldn't know right away but you'd have to you know I, I could point them out but then you look too close and you might see a few flaws too so.
Well, I never thought that we were going to get here because, you know, it was Doug and I, we had said that's going to be a two year project. It took us two and a half or four and a half years. And I kept thinking, oh, this is never going to get done. But it was always, you know, one little bit at a time. And eventually we got here. Now that's all finished, it's, it's fun to have the airplane done and able to go to flying breakfast or uh, other little fly-ins, uh, see people again. Uh, they're seeing an airplane that they've seen in the past for many years, but now it's in a completely different paint scheme. Uh, but it's, it's pretty unique that we've been around this airplane since we were about 11 years old and uh, still able to fly it and now give grandchildren rides and, and other people rides in it again. It's a, a, lot of, a lot of fun having that airplane available.